How could you find love in a man's hairy ass? <laughs> Take the Hershey Highway. Fudge packing man. Fudge packing man. A manly man. Oh. Okay. Oh. Oh. Yep. Back at it. Could Tulsi Gabbard possibly be a fraud? Oh boy, he's about to get spicy now. Recently, Tulsi Gabbard voted against BDS and it's caught a lot of flack for it. But then it really forced me to think, despite of all the foreign policy rhetoric that she makes that might sound good, she really hasn't said a single thing to do with Israel or Zionism this entire time. It's always just the basic talking points of, let's just de-evolve ourselves from everything. She really reminds me of a lot of Rand Paul during the 2016 election. He made a lot of good points about her foreign policy, but after a while I started to realize that he doesn't really seem to know much about these situations as far as technical details go, it was always just fall back to the basic libertarian talking point of let's just not get involved in anything ever. Even Donald Trump went into pretty technical detail about the situation in Syria for example talking about Saudi Arabia's role in arming the rebels and other terrorist groups in an attempt to have Assad overthrow. But as we later came to learn and this was especially exposed by brother Nathaniel that Rand Paul had some of his own allegiances as well. But see, here's the thing, if you keep up with Brendan O'Connell and the Antidote crew, you would have already known that there was possibly something quite wrong with Tulsi Gabbard at this point. Congresswoman, you know that Israeli military intelligence might get the contract for the cloud for the Pentagon, all the data, they have a back door to Russian military intelligence. Do you want to deal with this Article 3, Section 3 issue? Why are you guys blocking? We're just blocking. No, you're not. You're blocking. This is a very serious issue that has deserves to, has to get a moment. I understand. I, I've been walking. You see, a few weeks ago, or around the time of the first debate, Jeremy Roth Cushell caught up with Tulsi Gabbard and was trying to ask her questions regarding Israeli high tech and the possibility of Israeli technology being used basically as a backdoor to bring US technology over into China and into Russia. And it also forces you to wonder what her real motives are in this push for just de-evolving us from everywhere in the Middle East. You see, one of the narratives that not very many people shockingly are picking up on is the fact that if we are to just leave the Middle East cold turkey, the first thing that's going to happen is China is just going to go, go in and move it and make it a part of their Belt and Road Initiative. And if you want more information on the Belt and Road Initiative, watch my video about Nick Quintus and Iran. But basically the main theme with the Belt and Road Initiative is Israel teaming up with China and Israel working with China so that they can match their high technology with China's production capacity and this big trade route that is also going to go through Iran and up into Russia as well. And China is going to want as many Middle Eastern countries that they can get their hands on to make a part of this Belt and Road Trade Route Initiative. So basically it's going to be a, a lot of US technology going into China's hands and eventually also Russia through Israel. And even though obviously I'm very critical of our wars in the Middle East, we have to be pragmatic and think about whether or not a certain move is just going to be a part of another ploy into the Zionist hands. I mean, do you really think that it's genuine that all of a sudden all of these politicians in the Democratic Party just woke up to the wars in the Middle East. Brian Dawson also did a pretty good video regarding Tulsi's really just goofy tier response video, response to the criticism against her voting against BDS that I would also recommend you check out. Now, I voted for HRS 246 because I support a two-state solution that provides for the rights of both Israel and Palestine to exist and for their people to live in peace with security in their homes. I don't believe BDS is the way to accomplish that. BDS does not exclude a two-state solution. I don't know where you're getting that from. All it's saying is to boycott the apartheid state. That we have the right to not purchase goods made by settlers, people who are ethnically cleansing and colonizing and annexing land. You don't have to buy their products. We don't have to make investments and subsidize the military of a state that has snipers shooting children for sport. I don't agree with everything that Ryan Dawson says. I think he uh, is dodging the Israeli high-tech Belt and Road stuff mainly just because he's 
mad that Br Brendan O'Connell threw some shade at him. But for the most part, I like Ryan Dawson's work. In his video that he did on Tulsi Gabbard's response to her criticism over the BDS vote was pretty nice. But he didn't get it until just now when if he kept up with the antidote and, and gave him the ounce of credibility that they deserve, he would have already known that there was obviously something very fishy about Tulsi Gabbard. Which means that there's also something very fishy about her motives for pulling us out of the Middle East cold turkey before restoring our relations with those countries and also leaving behind a stable government. Now I'm not saying that Tulsi Gabbard specifically wants to pull us out of the Middle East so that China can move in and take it over themselves for their Belt and Road Initiative, but it's fishy that when she's approached about these issues concerning the Belt and Road and, and Israel's high-tech sector that she would just scurry away like a rat. Bernie Sanders did the same thing too. This, the uh, issue of the Jedi cloud, the Pentagon being compromised by Israeli intelligence. Have you looked into that? Do you, do you know that Microsoft is okay, basically... Excuse me, excuse me, excuse okay, this is a key issue though. When okay, are we going to yeah. talk about this? Israeli intelligence took over the Pentagon's cloud architecture. Okay. We'll are we going to talk about that. Okay, when are we going to talk about it? Well, there's going to be question and answer time. Okay. We're going to have a couple rallies. Okay. And please come, okay? Okay, thank Definitely you. Definitely here. Listen, I, I completely understand what you're talking about. Okay. I'm a refugee from Somalia and I know exactly what that situation is like. So. Okay. At least with Donald Trump, you saw someone who you thought you could really have some serious hope in. But it doesn't really seem like there's anybody at all today. Maybe Andrew Yang is a bit of a toss-up. But he didn't really have any statements at all to say about the anti-BDS law. I mean, first, Ilhan Omar says one slight thing about the Israeli lobby's overreaching influence, and the entire government has to have a hearing on anti-Semitism. And now with BDS growing in popularity, they have to have a hearing against that, because they actually are considering shutting down people's constitutional rights to boycott. And even more shocking, you see Tulsi Gabbard voting against BDS. In other words, voting against constitutional rights. And the other people you see standing up in the democratic debates are just so far out in clown world it's unbelievable i mean talking about health care for illegals and even reparations for slavery i mean how do you even make that work it's like the most goofy clown world crap that you're seeing out of third wave feminist bs on college campuses during the whole hdw cringe era of 2015 are now just all these openly viable ideas that are just being spoused out seriously by the democratic candidates and it's hard to believe that there are people who actually take any of this seriously. I mean, could you imagine Beta O'Rourke in the debate stage against Donald Trump? He would get completely massacred. Basically, every single one of them would get completely massacred, except for maybe Andrew Yang or Tulsi Gabbard. And even Tulsi Gabbard is just an absolute fraud.